So this is like maybe a controversial statement, but I'll put it on anyway. In my view, experiments are probably the most powerful way to test theory against, especially if we compare them to retrospective studies and to lab experiment. <coughs> so with, uh, with retrospective studies, the issue is that we must rely on strong identi on identification assumption. And uh, as an editor of, an, uh, of a journal that publishes mostly empirical work, I see in most papers, people explaining that the results are reasonable. Especially, and what does reasonable means? Reasonable means it doesn't shock us in regard to the theories that are around. So when you want to test a theory with non-experimental data, you also somewhere need the theory to make sense of your result. So if the results are too surprising, for example, if you find that there is no social learning whatsoever happening in Kenya, you might think, and if it's not you, it might be your referee or the editor, think, well, it's not because there is no social learning, it's because the identification assumptions were wrong. So there is a strong consensus bias because we are never completely sure that our identification assumptions are wrong, so we need a little bit the theory to provide us with some guidance and reassurance. With um, a, a field experiment, we don't have that problem because the theory guides us to run the experiment, but once we run the experiment, the results are there. Feynman was saying, it doesn't matter how smart you are, it doesn't matter how beautiful your theory is, if it doesn't accord to the experiment, it's wrong. So of course you could say, well, it's not true in that context, but then you can always go to another context. So, so that's one thing. Relative to lab experiments, lab experiments have also this flexibility, and in fact, it's through lab experiments that we realize that people are, can share money, etc. But lab experiments are in very specific contexts. It's like usually economics, undergrad students, in very specific situation, uh, doing weird things. So often the results are dismissed on the ground that what does, it, what does the behavior of an econ major in a lab tell me about what uh, uh, Mrs. So-and-so would do in the marketplace? So field experiments are less flexible than lab experiments because you're working with real people and it's real programs, so you cannot do everything in their system. But you gain the flexibility, you, you, what you lose in flexibility, you win in realism, and therefore in the fact that these results are much harder to ignore. So I think field experiments have a subversive power that neither observational studies nor lab experiments have. And I think in a sense this might be their main strength, and the main way in which they can be useful as a tool to build knowledge, uh, not only because well, there is good identification, that's a nice thing, but I don't think that's only it. It's the, it's the fact that they force us to be surprised if we need to be surprised. So let me step back a little bit to the first question. This will be my last, uh, my last, uh, my last word. Uh, by focusing on creative experimentation, are we abandoning the goal to reduce poverty in the narrow sense of income poverty uh, significantly one day? I don't think so. I think we are taking a step back or a step on the side. But I think experimenting with specific programs to fight the ills associated with poverty, lack of education, lack of health, corruption, etc., is a necessary first step to eradicating poverty in the sense of income poverty. That's for three reasons. Number one is that to be wealthy, you need to be alive. Another. Uh, uh, often, oh, too much used uh, jokes uh, from Keynes, in the long run we will be dead. I think that's kind of a joke for when he said it, but that's not at all true for the six or seven million children who die every year from diseases that could be prevented by immunization. I think when you see that, you can see what, is, what good is economic growth going to do to these kids if they are not alive to benefit from it. That's why, in a sense, I think we have to act here and now until we figure out the secret of growth. That doesn't mean we don't have to think of figuring out the secret of growth, but some of it shouldn't focus on the here and now. More generally, and this is more of a leap, I think it's likely that a healthy and well-educated population will be more likely to be able to take advantage of any growth opportunities that comes along. So we might as well get people ready for when this spark that we might or might not understand uh, comes in. 
The second reason is a political imperative. And it, it, let's come back to Roosevelt. This, is the, 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 this follows from the site that I already gave. So he explains that we need to experiment, etc. And he says, the millions who are in want will not stand by silently forever while the things to satisfy their needs are within easy reach. And we've seen that in many countries, of countries going really fast for some time, like for example, Brazil for some time. And then uh, people getting very upset with the increase in inequality and demanding very populist poverty and this populist poverty stopping the growth completely until we go back to a President Lula who was again kind of trying to bring back every, everybody to the same fold. India is a bit, India is a little bit at the cusp of knowing a similar fate with the poor there getting quite irritated by the absolute dismal quality of public service even as you have a, a slogan around like India shiny. We have to, if we want to keep some buy-in in the project of growth, we have to keep the benefits of growth going to the uh, widest number of people. The benefits of growth is a decent living. And in order to understand how to provide a decent living to people, we need not only to be willing to do it, but we need to give, us, give ourselves the means to do it, which I think implies uh, experimenting. The, the third thing, and this is a bit, a bit more uh, tentative, is that microeconomic estimation might be the key, or one key, to understanding macroeconomics better. So we have seen that growth regression alone are not going to go very far in uncovering the secret of growth. And it might be more promising to start from micro-funded, micro-estimated model and to put them together with calibration. So we could use, we can use them together, you can use them as building blocks to macro-model, which can then be ca calibrated to a real, to an economy. So that's, for example, what uh, Rob Townsend does. Take this micro-model and micro-estimated uh, parameter and then try and simulate how uh, this does for Thailand. Since we are very at the, at the beginning of this process of this uh, back and forth between micro and macro, but I think it's potentially very promising in terms of understanding better uh, macroeconomics and also using the macroeconomic data better in, the, in, the, on, in this uh, uh, calibration slash estimation. And the better we understand the micro relationship, the more useful the macro model will be. So, in French, uh, economics is, 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 is part of the human sciences, not only in English. Uh, but not in English, I don't think. So in French, you call economics in science humaine. I like this word very much, because I think we should practice economics as a, as a human science. So first, we should remember it's a science. So we should try to be, continue to be rigorous, impartial, do, it, do things very carefully, accept failure, etc. At the same time, it's a science of human beings, so with all its imperfection, complexities, we understand better today. It's a human science in the sense that it's, uh, it will err, and we just have to accept that. It's not a divine science. And in the sense, and finally, it needs to be human as being of, made by human beings, uh, that, uh, that is to remain generous and committed and uh, try to use our energy towards making the world a better place. Thank you very much.